Greetings, I'm Carmen Go Conway, a passionate natural hair professional with a commitment to living intentionally. Welcome to the Clean and Simple Podcast, where we embark on a journey through the vast and beautiful world of establishing and maintaining good habits and how they intersect with living our best lives. In this podcast, we'll delve into inspiring stories of amazing transformations that lie at the intersection of intentional living, habits, clean and simple living, and natural hair care. Join me on this personal journey towards building a life we can truly love. I am first generation, improve your quality of life and break generational curses. So naturally, I first learned about this term decluttering in my mid-20s. In some ways, I was already living this lifestyle in my head. Some may call this manifestation. As a little girl, my grandmother worked as a housekeeper. Husband was a doctor wife was a lawyer. They lived in a large, well-decorated, and what we now call minimalist home. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother while my mom was out and about, and I was only allowed to sit at the kitchen table and read my books and do my homework while my grandmother worked. Now, in hindsight, I think that's pretty cool of her because I was definitely old enough to help do some basic things, but I didn't have to. Now, fast forward to my grandmother's one-bedroom apartment. Although it was tiny, it was spotless, like so clean, you could literally eat off the floor without feeling like you're going to be sick to your stomach or get sick later. Now, as for my own home environment, I am one of 11 children. I grew up in a four-bedroom household with, at any given time, about five siblings because the older siblings were adults and have moved on and lived on their own. But living with five of them at any given time meant there was a lot of stuff. Talk about chaotic and uh, clutter everywhere. I knew from an early age that I would not want to live that way as an adult. To me, clutter means chaos. And that's exactly how it felt growing up. There was no order or structure, so things got lost and in many instances destroyed. My early years in therapy back in the my early 20s, taught me that clutter can consume not only our physical spaces, but also our minds. Decluttering any area in life requires intention and maintaining it requires a process of prioritizing action steps to help you maintain good habits. Two truths I hold dear. So when I want to declutter a space or a project or an area, I start by assessing how that particular space makes me feel. If it doesn't bring me happiness, it's time to declutter. Knowing what I don't want helps me identify my goals, which align with the action plan I use for every area of my personal and professional life. Once I have an action plan, I get to work, making sure to focus on one goal and decluttering task at a time. So you can probably imagine that I quickly realized how decluttering is a great way to manage every area in life. So I want to explore how I do it as a hair care professional and also as a home hair care consumer at home. So in my hair education studio, I go through the process of my back bar items. These are the things that I use to execute services for my clients and for the classes that I teach. So anything that's expired, um, I dispose of tools that are broken or no longer working. I really just consider the outcome of the hair and the experience when the style or service is complete. Did this product perform well? Did this tool speed up the process? Anything that doesn't make things better, smoother, or simpler has to go. Now at home, I declutter all my products to get rid of things I don't like. Empty containers, broken hair tools, and even accessories. While creating the new and improved version of our hair product guide, I started out randomly selecting products to test to consider including inside of the guide to recommend consumers purchase for different aspects of their hair care. Now, once I could no longer fit any new products in my already congested product areas at home, I realized while trying to help my community avoid being product junkies, I had become one. And keep in mind, I'm already a recovered um, product junkie, so doing it for a right cause or the right cause or for the right reason kind of made it a little bit conflicting. Sure, it is for good reason, but I don't like a lot of stuff, especially cosmetics. The overwhelming number of items caused my husband and I unnecessary stress in our bathroom with all the clutter, with all the products that really didn't have a home because 
They didn't fit in storage cabinets or drawers that I designated for these particular things. So I decided to be more strategic about new products and reading of them. So, you know, it wasn't overwhelming or stressful for me, but still produced the result that I was looking to help consumers figure out what products to use. So let's talk about some organizational techniques that I have come up with that I think could help you with clutter-free life, especially when it comes to your hair care products. But this extends to every other aspect of your life. The key is to ask yourself, when was the last time you used this particular thing? If you used it within like a handful of times and find it somewhat valuable, then naturally it's worth holding on to. Now, if you haven't used it in a while or you could go without it, get rid of it. You want to see the decluttering process through to the end. If you're donating items that you decide you no longer want to keep, make sure that you get them dropped off or pick them up um, by whomever is going to get them immediately after you're done sorting them. If it's going to be trashed, dispose of it properly. Whether it's going to be recycled, just put in a regular dump. This will prevent you from holding on to things you have already identified you need to let go. I cannot emphasize this part enough. It's only a half job done if you're going to go through the process of determining what you keep and what you don't keep. If you don't let go of the things you're not keeping, if you don't find a space for the things you are keeping, then you're not done. That clutter is still there. You're still holding on to it and it's still creating chaos, whether you realize it and accept it or not. In episode 68 of this podcast and show, I share a personal life hack for setting and achieving clear intentions and healthy habits for your hair and life. Because sometimes the hardest part about starting positive and pivotal changes is figuring out where to start and how to be consistent. It's a tried and true life hack that I share in that episode that can be applied to your own journey that basically walks you through creating a system that helps you establish and maintain health, you know, great habits and healthy living. And honestly, I'm going to be completely transparent. It is not a walk in the park. It's not a breezy process. It's not simple. It is hard work because you are changing essentially a part of who you are, your habits. It's one of the most difficult things you can improve about yourself. But if you actually go through the process of doing it step by step, bit by bit in certain areas of your life and expand, next thing you know, you'll be living this life that you absolutely love. That's why I share this thing. That's why I'm creating these podcasts and show episodes for you because I'm sharing the things that I was able to do to help me improve my quality of life. All in all, I've learned that clutter literally triggers me and makes me uneasy in spaces that lack function and order. If you were to ask my husband, he would likely agree that I'm somewhat of a control freak. (laughs) The truth is, and in my biased opinion, I feel like I'm more of a structure and order enthusiast and I get completely overwhelmed when things are disorganized. I'm the person with charts and a million drawers and color-coded systems everywhere. And sometimes it may take me a while to actually create them because, again, in chaotic spaces, I get overwhelmed. I tend to push them off until I get it done. But once I do, it feels a lot like peace. And peace is something I strive for in every aspect of my life. And so should you. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to leave a review and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. And leave a comment on my YouTube. I look forward to hearing how this podcast episode inspired you to live more clean and simple.